This is a quick run through of plans, uh, FY23 Q4 OKRs. As you can see, I'm not quite sure which of these is correct, but we either accomplished 84% or 0.9 or 90% of our OKRs for this quarter. Either way, these are pretty good outcomes. You can see this nice uh, trend line here um, of check-ins throughout the quarter, which shows a consistent kind of uh, contribution towards the goal. It's always a little bit below the ideal trend line, but that's kind of to be expected of OKRs. Um, you want them to be ambitious enough that you accomplish, you know, between 70 to 100%. If you're easily accomplishing 100%, it's considered, you know, not ambitious enough a goal. Uh, but we had a pretty ambitious goal as our main OKR for this quarter. Uh, you can see it ladders directly up into the CEO goal to do OKRs within GitLab uh, by Q1 of FY24, that's the quarter we're currently in. So you can see here that we accomplished this to 92%. Um, and I'll expand this here and we can have a look through some of the key results that we uh, attempted for the quarter. So this OKR was really let down just by one QR. Uh, this key result here to onboard successfully three contractors, we in fact did two contractors, took a little longer to get through the process of finding and onboarding contractors and we were quite a way into the quarter before we had um, accomplished that for even I think the first contractor at that point. Um, nevertheless these three KRs here are really inputs and not outcomes. This one here, this final one is like kind of the most important one. So uh, that was to make the first iteration of OKRs as work items available for use within GitLab by Q1 of FY24. Um, and what this means in reality is that we would um, have all the code in production behind a feature flag and have it stable enough to flip the feature flag on for an internal group so that everyone within the organization could complete their OKRs. And we achieved that goal. So that was really a phenomenal effort from everybody. Um, I want to take a chance to say thank you to everybody in plan who made that happen. Even if you didn't work directly on this goal, you worked on something that allowed other people to focus on this goal. So it was a huge accomplishment and really, really well done. The second OKR was to implement significant performance enhancements, and this was completed to 61%. But if I expand this out, you can see why. Um, most of the um, contributions that weren't completed to 100% were actually closed uh, at 0% or a low percentage because we decided we didn't want to do them. Um, this OKR was quite ambitious as well uh, because it was the first implementation of a kind of new strategy for improving performance within the UI that focuses on optimistic rendering, um, front-end caching, things like that. It's probably easier just to demonstrate it rather than to go through the KRs. Um, so here is a group issues list. It's important to note that it's a group issues list. It's GitLab org and it's quite a large group um, in that it has a lot of subgroups, a lot of projects, um, team members have access to various things within those groups. So if I wanted to filter this by labels, the labels list, the calculation required to show me the labels I had access to was actually incredibly slow. Uh, you can see here if I go and load the labels list now, it's instant. So the first page of labels is instant. And also uh, you can see recently used labels, but uh, if I put in, you know, common things that I would filter for, these are also very, very fast because it starts to cache on my browser uh, common searches that I make. Um, and to put this in context, these would previously take six to 10 seconds for this group. It was a really painful experience. And in actual fact, what's going on is they're rendering the labels from the front end cache and then refreshing the list using the same long running query, but in the background. So I get the labels first and you know, this is a list that doesn't change very often, but if it has changed, I will see the new labels, um, but I won't be held up by the request cycle. The second thing about this is that the list of issues itself is actually cached here. So if I refresh the page, you'll see um, very for a short period, this empty state, and then you'll see a list of issues here. And again, the same thing happens. So you see that this is 
you know, this is again a large group with a lot of activity. So you saw one list initially and then you saw more issues pop in on top. That's because it renders firstly the issues from the cache and it's running the, re the request in the background to refresh and get the new issues and put them on the top. So you just have this snappier experience where you're kind of navigating around and it's, it's very quick and you nine times out of 10 are gonna get access to the thing that you want much, much more quickly than you would have previously. Um, another uh, aspect of this OKR was to kind of do this for the first time. And so we were figuring a lot out as we went. And this was really driven by Natalia, uh, who's the principal engineer for Plan. And we were kind of trying these things out to see if they worked. So we originally thought that we would start with index DB, but we decided instead to cache within local storage and defer using index DB to the future. So that will most likely be uh, uh, an OKR or part of a KR for OKR for this quarter for Q1. Um, but currently we're using local storage. Uh, another part of this was to actually prepare for future uh, performance improvements. So if I go to this issue list, so what's different about assigned issues and regular issue lists is that this was always uh, in view or was in view when we started this quarter. This issue list, assigned issues, is actually in um, Haml or was in Haml. Um, this has now been ported into view by Kong and this frees us up in the future to actually cache this as well. So this will most definitely uh, form part of a, a, an OKR in Q1 as well. And what that means is instead of again having this request cycle, your assigned issues will load almost instantly from the cache optimistically and then the cache will update in the background from requests just like it does with other issues list. The ultimate goal is to make it extremely inexpensive to navigate to things that are assigned to you using this menu up here on the top and starting with issues. So um, so yeah, that's a demo of this uh, OKR, the second OKR for performance improvements. We will have another one for this quarter. Um, there are a couple of working groups spinning up around front end performance. Um, which will also look at uh, not just doing this within plan, but spreading it out among the engineering engineering organization. Uh, let's see if I covered everything here. So yeah, we can expand this one here to see a little more about what was done. And we can see the one that was closed out here was related to index DB. Most of the other KRs were accomplished in full. The third OKR was this one, to establish plan as leaders in enhancing GitLab's product development flow. The idea behind this OKR was that as the team that produces planning features, we should be more vocal and have stronger opinions about uh, how GitLab can improve its product development flow. If I expand this site, you can see how, how we intended to do this. Um, we wanted to trial process improvements with other groups outside of plan implement three of them at the organization level, and then also improve the, re improve the retrospective process for the whole organization um, that would help us gather further feedback in future. Um, Yarka also had an OKR here to improve plan stage processes themselves, including documenting a retrospective process for plan, which we didn't have before this, a properly documented timeline and also creating weekly updates for plan stage team members to move them out of one-to-ones and into uh, higher leverage uh, environments like an issue or multimodal communication and so on. So a couple of important things to note about this OKR, we didn't count OKRs themselves as a new process because that would be double counting. We're all, we already have an OKR for producing OKRs as work items. So that wasn't counted. And second of all, in the first KR to trial three process improvements. We didn't include health status automation because that was already trialed with other groups before the quarter started. So we had to find three new ones. The idea was to find three new process improvements. That would give us four in total to trial with other teams and then implement three of those at the organizational level. We actually only did two new processes with other groups but we did implement three process improvements at the organization level. Uh, one was uh, value stream analytics within retrospectives. So you can now access value stream analytics for the milestone that the retrospective is for directly from the retrospective itself. The second one was internal notes 
on retrospectives so that safe information can be uh, properly protected within the retrospective process, which ultimately makes retrospective issues public. This improves transparency because you can make the whole issue public, even if there's information in there that you want to keep private within the organization that can be done using an internal note. And the third process improvement at the organizational level was to introduce health status automation across the board for the whole GitLab project. Now, any issue with the deliverable label within the current milestone will have its health status updated automatically if it's not updated by the assignee. This means that it's really, really easy to get a quick idea of what's at risk or um, what needs attention within the milestone at different at, at any time during the milestone. Um, and so also part of this OKR, the idea behind it was to build a habit for pushing our features throughout the organization, for making sure that we're communicating even the small features to the rest of the organization and helping to improve the efficiency of GitLab generally um, by informing people of the features that we're building uh, understanding as a team how to collect feedback on those features and how to best communicate them to the rest of the org. Um, this was completed, I think, at 92%, 92%. So it was just that the fact that we didn't trial three process improvements. But again, that was kind of an input and not an outcome. The outcome was successful. We uh, basically one per month new process for uh, improvement for the whole of the organization, which is a really nice outcome and also helps us gather more feedback on the features that we're producing. Finally, the last OKR was around talent assessment. Um, not really something you can do at anything less than 100%, but it was useful to track throughout uh, the organization as ultimately with any timeline, especially one that's on the scale of month, month and a half, you're going to get a lot of PTO. We want to make sure that the talent assessment process is broadly on track, regardless of PTO. And it was, so you can see if you're interested very quickly here, uh, which groups were able to complete. Obviously, if a subgroup of mine can't complete uh, talent assessment on time, then I also can't mark this as 100%. All talent assessments have been done. Uh, this is just a measure of what was done within the quarter. I think 90% is pretty much what I would expect, about 10% of PTO to interfere with the process. Everything else is more or less what I would expect. So those are the OKRs for Q4. We'll have OKRs for Q1, but those will be, of course, within GitLab itself and will be visible to everyone. Um, I will do an update on those within the team meeting probably next week. So that's about three weeks into the quarter. Obviously, we want to bring that timeline forward, but I think just given that we're using a new system, even though it's one that we built, uh, the whole organization has to learn to use it. So we're a little bit later this month with getting OKRs finalized. But you should be able to figure out like roughly from these what we'll be targeting in Q1.